my first professional job really was in, in Norfolk, Virginia, at a newspaper called the Ledger Star. And it was great. You know, I graduated from Penn in 1976. I applied to 307 newspapers. I had a job offer at one. Journalism was really, really hot then. Everybody wanted to be a journalist. Because of Watergate, it was considered glamorous and also really important. So that's the job I got. But, you know, we were doing 100-inch stories, 5,000-word stories, investigative stories as a first-year reporter. So I, I got in at the really perfect time. I've worked at um, I guess four newspapers, and, and have, I live in Philadelphia. I still have a lot of ties and friends at the Philadelphia Inquirer, uh, which is where I worked the longest, where I was lucky enough to win a Pulitzer. And they're going through massive changes. I mean, the staff has, has been cut uh, in half. Uh, when I was at the Inquirer, I, I once spent two years on a single story. I mean, that was absolutely unheard of mm -hmm. um, today. And, you know, clearly, there's going to be no print product left that's going to move online and I don't know what that's going to be like. I still think it's hard online to read really long stories. I think people now are much more oriented to shorter stories and, and bouncing all around and I think it's ultimately could be really you know a shame for the public because you won't get the kind of investigative reporting particularly on a local basis that you need to know what's going on. So it's, it's been painful to watch. All journalists have a dream of writing a book. I had a Neiman Fellowship at Harvard in 1985 and it was an incredibly stimulating year. You can take any course you want at the university. It's not graded. You meet all these wonderful professors. And I said, you know, I really owe it to myself to do something different with my life. So in between going, the end of the fellowship, going back uh, to the Inquirer, I took a trip out west with a friend and went through all these tiny little towns. And that's when it hit me because Main Street, even then, was obliterated. But you would see these stadiums, and they were gorgeous, and they were, you know, beautifully painted and immaculate, and they, were, they would even water the field if there was a drought. And I said, I said to myself, these are shrines. I mean, these are temples. This is where a town comes together on a Friday night. This is where hopes and dreams are lived out on the, on the backs of high school kids. So I kept thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. And then I found the town of Odessa in 1988 and very abruptly quit the paper and lived there for a year. All these college recruiters said, if you're going to do it, you should do it in Odessa. An incredible program. They want to watch state championships. And the setting was right because it's basically in the middle of nowhere. You know, it's in West Texas. It's 300 miles from Dallas. It's 350 miles from El Paso. Uh, it's not technically a small town because it's 100,000, but because it was so isolated, it you know, felt like a small place, and then, you know, I got hooked when I saw the high school football stadium. I went there in 1988. The stadium had been built in 1985 for $5.6 million. It uh, had a capacity of 19,000 people. It had a two-story press box. Uh, it had artificial turf, as it turned out. When I was there, you know, they would uh, go to several away games by charter jet. You know, this was high school football. So it was a really, really, you know, big deal and really entwined in the fabric mm -hmm. of the community. I went down the spring of 1980, you know, I met with various people, so I got permission to be there. I mean, they knew who I was. They knew I was a journalist. People were, you know, excited. I mean, they liked the fact that a legitimate reporter was, was, was coming down to, you know, to write about them. When the book came out, they weren't so excited, uh, at least some people in the town. I was su supposed to go back for a series of uh, book signings and had to cancel them because of threats of bodily harm. I mean, people just wanted to beat the crap out of me. And I knew Odessa, and I knew those were real threats. But, you know, people were nice, and I think they liked the fact that instead of parachuting in and out, you know, you go in for a weekend and then go back home. I was there for a year. I mean, I lived there for a year. My kids went to school there for a year, and I really became part uh, of the community. It's the only way to do a book um, like this. Now, the book, I felt in some places, many places, was very empathetic to the town and certainly to the kids who played the game of football. But in other places, it was very harsh. And, you know, I had no idea what to expect, but there was an awful racism. There was hideous treatment of a black football player who was supposed to be the star. The academic standards, uh, you know, were a joke. And to ignore that as, as a journalist would be, you know, a complete dereliction of my duties, plus the overemphasis was mind-boggling, although I think it occurs virtually everywhere uh, today.